any of these buttons. Just press a button and sing. You're off. And up until now, I've pressed them all. Except one. This one. Go ahead, Charlie. Me? There it goes. Hold on tight. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. Faster, faster. If we don't pick up enough speed, we'll never get through. What's up, YouTube? Flight Dojo here, coming at you with a Microsoft Flight Simulator video. I am a real Airbus A320 pilot. Despite my channel having mostly Warbird stuff, I uh, my day job is flying this sucker here. And I thought since so many people with no flight background and no training at all in airplanes uh, are currently flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it might be useful if you guys knew what all this stuff does, right? What are all these panels for? So I'm going to start my timer here in a moment, and I'm going to see if I can explain to you what every switch in here does in less than, I don't know, let's say 12 minutes, okay? So here we go. I'm going to start my timer in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go. All right, so uh, starting from the top, we have this ADERS. This is the Air Data Information Inertial Reference System panel. All you got to know, these are three navigation units. They also tell you airspeed information, these information, all these numbers here. Oop, we're going to stall. Why is that? Oh, it's because the auto thrust doesn't work. Here we go. We don't want to do that. We're not going to stall because it's an Airbus, but again, we'll, we'll start. We'll just disregard. I don't know why the auto thrust doesn't spawn on, but we're going to try to get this thing in. We're wasting time here. We're wasting time here. Just fly at 250 for me. Perfect. Okay. So, three navigation or sorry, navigation instruments here, right? So we have two parts, one's, in a, one's a set of gyros, one are a bunch of probes out there on the wing that we can't see from in here. And if they fault, they'll tell you so. The emergency procedures will tell you that you needed to do stuff here. You have three of them. So if you lose one, uh, you still got two. So that's plenty of redundancy there. You're not going anywhere. Don't worry about it. Flight control systems, all right? There are seven computers that control the flight control system in the Airbus. This is the elevator aileron computer, the spoiler elevator computer, and the flight augmentation computer. Flight augmentation computer gives you a bunch of Christmas warrants on your airspeed indicator, tells you a bunch of information you need to know, which we'll discuss later in other videos. But otherwise, these are the computers. If you turn these computers off, it's like HAL 9000 getting shut down. Bad things happen, you enter bad control laws, and the airplane no longer knows how to fly. Dang. My mind is going. Uh, we don't want to do that. So we want to keep these on. If they do uh, stop working, uh, it's okay. You've got a lot of them. There's seven. So a lot of them have to fail for you to have a really bad day. Uh, but if that were to happen, it would be a very bad day in the Airbus. Here is the evacuation panel. This is the uh, panel we would use if things were really very, very bad and we needed to evacuate the aircraft. In that event, uh, we would refer to the evacuation panel to command the flight attendants to begin the evacuation procedure. This switch here, it's very important. It's in the wrong position. It needs to be down here in the captain position so our flight attendants, or the pursers, which is indicated by here, aren't able to command evacuations on their own because we are the final authority and we want all the control because we're the pilots. And so this is the captain selection. It needs to be there. This is the emergency electrical panel. This is the uh, panel that is uh, going to deploy our little windmill called a ram air turbine if uh, we lost both generator 1 and generator 2 on the airplane. We have two generators on each engine. If we lost both of them, we've got to have emergency electrical power because, again, we're powered all by computers, and our computers need power. Otherwise, we can't control the airplane. So we press this little button here. It should automatically come out. If it doesn't automatically come out, we press this button here. Bam! Windmill comes out, and now we've got power. Gen 1 line, that means... If there's smoke in the avionics bay, which is this big, big kind of closet below our seats here, you can't see it. If there's smoke in there, we press this, and hopefully it solves the problem. If not, you're having a really bad day. Maybe open the window and, uh, yeah, refer to the emergency procedures. Moving on, we have the jip whiz. This means this is the computer that's responsible for don't uh, telling the pilots that they're they're making a mistake and they might hit the ground. So it says warning, warning, terrain, pull up, pull up. So in this indication, any of these faults means you're losing different modes of the ground proximity warning system. Uh, you just you know, there's no way to recover it most of the time. It's just going to fault. You're not going to lose. You're just going to lose that associated function. These three switches here are not actually emergencies. You would use these if you were doing these things. So landing in flaps three rather than flaps full, landing without flaps, and then not using the glide slope. You'd turn those on and tell the computer, hey, don't tell me that I'm getting ready to hit the ground because I'm doing this on purpose. This is the CVR, Cockpit Voice Recorder. It's recording everything we say today in the cockpit so the accident investigators are able to parse through what we've said today to find out whose fault it was. Spoiler alert, it's probably our fault. But here's the situation here. 
ground control makes it so we can control everything on the ground. It, the CBR is recording what we say on the ground because it's normally only powered for about five minutes after we bring the uh, power online and then forever after we start the engines. But that, th that in between, after that five minutes before the engine start, needs to be recorded. So we have to tr press this button here. CVR test, again, you just press this and uh, make sure the CVR is working. If it's not, if you press that button and then you don't hear a beep sound, whoop, you need to turn the parking brake on, silly, because it for some reason has to be on. Otherwise, the CVR test doesn't work, of course. I don't know why you didn't know that. Anyways, oxygen panel. Crew supply, you got to press that button and make sure that we get oxygen up here. If for some reason, the cabin pressure gets too high and there aren't, isn't enough oxygen to breathe at this altitude, we need to have oxygen available to us. So if we press that button, then these oxygen masks that are stowed in this little closet over here are getting oxygen. If you press the passenger, if you press this, uh, lift this red guard switch and press this, we drop what's called the rubber jungle. It's going to drop a bunch of oxygen masks from the ceiling of the cabin. If you accidentally press it, you can probably kiss your job goodbye because, you know, it's going to be very expensive to send the maintenance guys out to reset all of those de automatic deployment devices. Uh, so this, if you see this light here, something's very wrong because the cabin pressure is too high and the computer deployed the rubber jungle automatically. So you've really messed up. Calls panel. This is how you call to get coffee. That's the only button you need to know. Call that. You press that button. Say, hey, can I have a coffee? And they bring you coffee. Uh, if things are going really badly and you need to tell whoever's in the back that we're having a bad day, you press this panel, and instead of just a one chime, it's a three high-low chime. So coffee button, oh shit button. Those are the differences there. This is the wipers. Don't turn these on above 230 on this airspeed indicator, okay? So right now we're doing 250. Don't turn those on. This might break, okay? 230. Rain repellent. If there's a lot of rain, you can press this, and it's like that magic rain stuff that comes out and helps the rain slide off of the uh, windscreen faster. Here are the engine fire push buttons. They're going to light up if you're on fire. Verify which one is on. Don't do this on accident. If you have an engine fire on the first engine and you accidentally press engine fire 2 push button because uh, you're excited, then now you've cut off fuel and everything to the second engine except for the only good engine that's still running is the one that's on fire. So we always verify which ones we're going to press. You just ask the guy next to you, hey, is that light on? And he's like, yeah, that's li that, that light is on. And we press that. Okay, It's going gonna, it's gonna to disconnect the engine from every system, every system down here. So hydraulics, fuel, pneumatics, air conditioning, it's all electrical, it's all coming off. Then you can press these buttons uh, when they light up after the computer tells you to, and you're gonna fire Halon into that engine, hopefully put the engine fire out. We're at six minutes, we're doing good, making good time. Here's the hydraulic panel, we've got three hydraulic systems, green, blue, and yellow. Each of them are at 3,000 pounds per square inch. There are two engine driven pumps coming from the engine to drive these hydraulic power. There's a power transfer unit. That's the dog barking sound that you hear when you get into the gate after flying in an Airbus. <laughs> it's only job is to make sure that these, these system pressures stay within a certain amount of tolerances. It's about 500 PSI difference. Otherwise, it'll start barking and try to maintain that, this, that these are balanced. Green's responsible for uh, some, it's, you know, it's responsible for the first thrust reverser. Anyways, we're not going to get into that. We don't have time for it. We only have six, about five and a half minutes left, so yeah, green, blue, and yellow. The blue is the high backup system. They're responsible. Uh, it's powered by the ram air turbine. Again, if we drop the windmill and the ram air turbine comes out, it's going to give us blue hydraulic pressure at 2,500 PSI. If you start it if from here, you're going to get hydraulic and electrical power. If you press it from here, you're just going to get electrical power. That's all you need to know that. If you have a fault in either of these pumps, there's probably a problem with either your pump itself or the reservoir that is flowing through that pump. So we just make sure that we are following the emergency procedures the way to the T, to the way they're supposed to be followed. We also have an electrical yellow pump, which we use on the ground to maintain uh, nose wheel steering typically if we don't have um, all the engines started. Moving down to the fuel panel, we have six, three, four, five, six fuel pumps, one, two in each inner wing tank, and then two center tank pumps. All you need to know about these pumps is that on the ground, the airplane wants to uh, test the center tank pumps for two minutes or so, and then once you deploy your slats, it's going to be on the fuel pumps, uh, the inner wing tank pumps for takeoff, and then after you retract your slats, those little things on the uh, uh, wing, uh, which if you don't know, I'm, I'm not going to get into it because we don't have time, but you are going to uh, switch back to the center tank and then burn from the center tank until the center tank's empty, more or less. There's some caveats we don't have time to get into, but then it'll go back to burning from the wing tanks. If you see a problem here, oh, dude, you did not just kill an engine with turning off a fuel pump. That's not real life. We're going to continue. Apparently, I just killed an engine. That's not going to happen in real life. Anyways, so um, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Anyways, so we have... Um, if you, <laughs> I'm, I'm startled now. I'm startled now. That's not how this works. Anyways, um, yeah, so if you do see a fault here, it's because the pump is low pressure. The pump is not supplying enough fuel to the engine or the associated system, and so you would lose your power there. 
that's the only time you would see anything wrong with that. How much time? We have 8 minutes, 27 seconds. We've got to hurry up. Electrical power. The electrical power, you have two engine-driven generators, one and two. You also have an APU generator. If you lose all of your generators, you're going to have the Raymar turbine, which we talked about here on the emergency panel. <sighs> I can't believe I had an engine failure today during this video. This is the worst day ever. Okay, so... Uh, so you do see that the Gen 1 is offline because the engine's down, so we do have a fault light here. It should be amber. I don't know why it's red. If the IDG's fault, you're going to have uh, oil problems. It's high oil temperature, low oil pressure. That's pretty much all you need to know. The batteries are here. You need 25.5 volts to make sure you can start your APU. Other than that, if you see this light coming on, one of your generators is outside of the limitations. APU generator, we don't touch that because the APU generator stays on unless for some reason we need the APU on uh, to provide bleed air and the generator off. I don't know why we would do that. I, I guess I lost an engine. I'm going to start my APU uh, because... I want to have two generator sources. This should have faulted because we only have gen one generator source at this time. But yes, this is all of our electrical systems. Uh, again, all you need to know is that if you're plugged in an external power, you plug that in, you need to switch to external power there. And if you have false lights while well, something else is happening and the uh, computer should tell you what's happening. Um, here's the air conditioning panel. It's, uh, we have two air conditioning systems, pack one and pack two. If they fault, there is an uh, issue with probably over pressure or over temperature in the associated components, and uh, that's it. If you don't have very many passengers on board, switch to low. If you have a lot of passengers, you switch to high. It provides more air for air conditioning. Uh, APU bleed, if you want air conditioning from the air APU, you need to have the APU bleed on, which we'll just do now. Ram air turbine, did we have our engine come back? Dude, I don't know what's happening here. Anyways. Um, Hot air, yeah, if you have faults here, you have a hot air leak, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of faults here. We don't have time to get into it. Nine minutes. This is the air conditioning panel. Controls how hot and cold things are. Ram our turbine won't open unless you're... Oh, my God, we have 10 minutes, 13 seconds remaining. Anti-ice. If it's cold out, less than 10 degrees Celsius, you turn this stuff on, make sure you don't have ice on things, okay? Uh, let's see. This is uh, if you want to turn on your probe heat on the ground. Uh, it's, it's, they're on right now, but if on the ground, you, for some reason you have ice on the ground, you need to turn them on. Bam, you can turn them on that way. Landing elevation, put, keep it in auto. The computer knows wh where you're going. If it doesn't, then you can refer it, uh, to many things. This is the light panel, APU. This is auxiliary power unit. Uh, this, press that, open the inlet, get ready to start. Boom, start. Once it's available, bam, it's running, it's on speed. Lights, like I said, uh, here we go. Uh, seat belt, smoking. This is the emergency lights, uh, and then this is the integrated lighting for this panel. You can control it here. And, uh, yeah, whatever, domes, that stuff here. Uh, what are we at? Oh, one minute to go, one minute to go. So we have the, uh, again, more flight controls here. We have cargo heat, uh, cargo the cargo vent. There's the aft isolation valve. You don't need to worry about that. You're not going to touch that. If you have a cargo fire, you refer to this panel. The computer tell you to start deploying, uh, uh, discharging um, fire suppressant bottles into the cargo area here. Ventilation panel, this is for the avionics um, area down here there's two there's a there's a ventilation system that uses outside air it can be in three modes it doesn't matter if you get if you get a fault light on both of these there's fire if you have an issue with just one of them it's going to tell you and you're going to turn it off that's what you're going to do with this panel this is if you have to manually start the engines which i've never done in real life so don't worry about this panel because it's automatic otherwise 30 seconds remaining this is the flight management guidance computer it's the computer that controls where we're going what we're doing and, and wh who we're doing it with i guess uh here is the radio panel this is where you tune frequencies if you haven't figured it out talk to different people on the radio. This is audio. This is what you're listening to. This is our weather radar. This is how we control what we're seeing on the weather radar, which would display there. This is a switching panel. It backs up various systems. Uh, you don't need to worry about it because it's not even implemented. But if you did, there you go. Five seconds. Uh, that's it. That's it. I think we're done. There's flaps, slats, and parking brake. That's it. Done. 12 minutes flat. I've missed some stuff. This is not a complete video, okay? I also lost an engine, so it's not the best video you've ever had. But that's a, a general surface level idea of what you could see in an Airbus and what these different panels do. Again, there are labeled, so you probably figured a lot of this stuff out. But here's a little more information from somebody who actually flies the airplane. Try to do it very, very quickly, very quickly so you don't lose interest because I know you don't want to get a degree in this. You just want to kind of figure out what is going on. Here's another important switch. Somebody's in the toilet and you've got to go potty. Uh, and if you call the flight attendant with the call panel and ask her to go potty, uh, she's going to laugh at you if you didn't see the switch that says occupied first. She's going to say, hey, dummy, somebody's in there. Okay? That's an important one. All right. Th that's a flight dojo video on the Airbus A320. Probably going to do a more in-depth series where I'm not rushing around and making mistakes and um, you know, fraudulently uh, killing engines for no reason. That's Again, that's not how that would work in real life, but whatever. Uh, and uh, that's it. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good one.